Okay, so uh, here's class six, and we talk about the pyramid and robot stuff. So we've done, we've gone, we've, we've come a long way. We have thought about how do we create a revenue engine. And that revenue engine it has a lot of theory, but it's not just theory. When you, we talk about theory, that is how your executives are communicating and thinking. So we must communicate and think that same way. And when they ask us to do something, we can then talk about how it fits into our data model. And then we went over the fundamental of how to do, like how to set up your, your data correctly so you can answer all these questions very quickly and start to have command of that revenue formula, what it really means to be a revenue operations professional. So what I want to say is next is I just as we go I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this is here is what happens and so you are you're working in a company uh, and many times RevOps or this like dedication to the science and analysis of your revenue flow is not the first place people start like there's a history that has occurred and so this is a very this is very common what happens and we want to start sharing change this narrative so what happens is we come in we have a product we have a service. And we start, we start selling that usually with the founders. They come in and they, we start, we'll start building a sales team and we'll have our first AE and they need a PowerPoint presentation because we have to over and over give the same product and service pitch. And from that, once we have our AE, we start have to, like, we have to standardize our pricing and we need to start forecasting what is going to close. And with that comes, how are we doing comp plans? With comp plans, we start having quotas and we start needing more dashboards to answer questions as our business and our revenue team grows. We hired two more, we had we had two more AEs. We have a sales ops professional gets hired or uh, traditionally sales ops. We don't start with, the, we don't start with rev ops. Then we start, we need to train our AEs because we're having issues and we need to give them playbooks to repeat over and over. We hire SDR teams because we need people to prospect and we hire, we get a new platform, our sales enablement platform. And then we start doing enrichment so we can have better lists to go after. And you see, we start building an upside down pyramid. And then we have a consultant come to help because this thing's falling over. Because if this AE all of a sudden is not performing anymore, you take it out and it falls over. Then we have another consultant because our building blocks are out of whack. So what we start doing is we start bringing the person. And when someone doesn't hit it, we bring in a VP of sales, we fire and hire new people. It becomes a superstar culture. It becomes where we have individuals that dictate process we have and over that after that then we think about the people we think about people then we talk about tools and then we think about training right we, we actually get tools before training then we think about enablement at the very top we start doing process and so this is why it's so hard as a revenue operations professional because the process matters less than the opinion of how we are uh, of the person at the bottom especially if one of, they're one of the best performers and so you're likely walking into a company that was built using this framework. And so how do we shift? And so we talk about, remember the growth model, getting from $1 million AR to $10 million AR with, with the go-to-market motion. It requires deconstructing and reconstructing this robust pyramid. And so what we want to do is we want to go from this pyramid and we want to start going from the right side. And so what we showed from the very beginning is you start saying, hey, this go to market motion, there's actually a data model. And that data model is going to allow us to follow us. It's going to put us in specific processes so we can answer questions. And we have specific tools that we need to be able to answer these data model for us to dictate what processes are coming on. And then based on those tools, we can then start training and create enablement. And we can pick the right tools to enable our team to execute on that go to market motion that we've talked about. And then based on all of that, we then think about how we're going to organize the sales team because we know our go to market structure and we know what we need to measure. And based on what we need to measure, we know how many salespeople, because we know conversion ratios, et cetera, and we have expectations. And so you need to switch it. And to be able to switch this conversation, this is why it's so darn hard. You have to be able to talk strategic and bring it down all the way to the tactical. So I hope during this time, we've had it. I hope during the time you are better able, more equipped to have this conversation, because this is what you're doing. This is what you're trying to get to, to have a stable pyramid where you can start growing. I want to make this point. People are not, a people are the result of the process. If we have an AE that is not doing well, it's likely because we have a process where they, not have, they have not been trained. We don't have a proper ramp time. We don't have the playbooks. It's because our process is not there. 
you know, we are so quick to fire. That's why we have 18 month higher. We have 18 month averages of VPs of sales. And to, you know how long it takes to validate a go to market motion? 18 months. <laughs> we'll have a VP of sales. They'll come in. They'll think about a new go to market motion, and they do this. They do this portion. They bring in the friend. Anyway, just the point. Okay, we are 11:34. I'm going to bring this home. Final portion. So we've talked about all this. Okay, how do we prioritize? And you saw this slide earlier. RevOps lift. RevOps lift. When we start going and having conversations, is you can only have this conversation within the framework of the business model, the data model, the math model, uh, the data model, and your and, and then how you're measuring these. And then you're able to look at RevOps lift, which is marginal impact on specific conversion or time ratios that had exponential and compound impact on revenue. And then you can start looking up best practices on how to run disco calls, et cetera. And so here's an example, just to give this, just to like put some math behind it so you see it, is marginal gains over time. So we'll start with one. If we had 100 leads, and I put in, I'm not putting names on this because I want us to start thinking as robots professionals. So my conversion ratio one is 0.3, conversion ratio of two is 0.2, and my C3 to C4 is 0.1. My average contract value is 10K. That means my AAR is 12. That means if I think about my total revenue that I was generated during this month, I think, think as a monthly amount, that's what I generated. Small twi tweaks, small tweaks to individual processes within that revenue journey can result and large impacts to revenue. That's the beauty. And so how we prioritize and think about it, here it is. And this is on the exponential portion, the left side of the funnel, when I'm talking about the customer success portion. 